it's been a while since I've been in the kitchen and I'm getting a bunch of stuff done today. So I was going to take you along with me. There will be some recipes, some meal prepping, and just ways to save in the kitchen. So I'm excited. Let's get right into this. First things first, I went ahead and took those chicken leg quarters for $4.99. I got them at Costco the other day. You can check out that haul a few videos back. But we got eight leg quarters. My husband ate three of them, and now it's time to just uh, store them. So what I did was peel off all of the chicken that I could. I'm going to vacuum seal them into probably four portions. I think we'll be good there. And then for the rest of it, skin and all, I am going to put this in the crock pot and I'm going to make chicken broth out of this. So super easy to do. I'm not gonna can it because we have plenty on my shelf over here, but I might freeze some and then I will just save some for the rest of this week. We have plenty to make with chicken broth. I just have my crock pot here and all I'm doing is putting the bones and such in here. And this was the package sell by date was the 29th, uh, $4.99. I thought that was a great deal. I don't know if Costco does that all the time. Um, again, I'm very new to the store. And what I do is just add some filtered water. I don't do my spices in here. I typically do my spices, I'd say, I don't know, when I'm cooking. And that's more of like sages and parsley, things that complement chicken. But I will add some salt, not too much because uh, the skin tends to be super salty and then of course some pepper and yeah i'm just gonna let this go low and slow for eight hours and we will have some delicious chicken broth uh, i do this with rotisserie chicken too you could do it you know with just about anything the bones make a really good flavoring for certain dishes I actually have a lot of ham from Christmas left over as well, and I'm also going to portion these out for the vacuum seal, but I am gonna use some tonight. I have some dough going, the kids are having a good time. Uh, some dough going over here for some stromboli, and I'm just gonna make some calzones for myself, but we don't have any pepperoni, so I'm just gonna do ham and sausage and some Italian spices, and we'll be just fine. But for the rest of the ham, this definitely can be portioned out so we can use it uh, for different types of meals coming up here. So the ham ended up giving us three bags with a portion for the stromboli, and the chicken is the same, three bags with a portion for buffalo chicken stromboli. So that's happening. Uh, y and I are gonna seal these bags here, label them, get them in the freezer, and then we're moving on to some stromboli and calzone. Here is what we have going on. We have the chicken broth. Um, the kids are upstairs. We have uh, just the three bags of chickens vacuum sealed. We have ham vacuum sealed. And then over here, I don't know if you remember in the last video, I did some sausage gravy. So I just saved some. <laughs> oh, um, and then I put some ham in there and that's going right into our stromboli. Uh, and then we're just gonna put some cheese on it just so we can utilize some leftovers. And then the dough here is on its second rise. I just add a little bit of flour at a time and probably do two rises and I get a really crispy, tasty dough. I added some Italian seasoning and some garlic in there just to make it a little bit more stromboli-esque, calzone-esque. I don't really know. I don't make it a specific way. I'm not Italian at all. So we shall see how this goes, but uh, I think it's gonna taste just fine as long as we have some marinara to dip it in, which we have plenty, but that's where we're at right now. Okay, so here is the dough. It's still pretty wet, but I like to do that with my uh, stromboli doughs and like hoagie rolls and things like that. And then I just add a lot of flour over here and I knead with a lot of flour. So I have some extra. And what I'm gonna do is make them into little stromboli balls so uh, we can have our own individual ones and they're easier to freeze that way so that's what i'm doing i have some mozzarella that needs to be used up and then i have uh, uh, the actual meat mixture and then i'm going to use some provolone as well
I'm trying to stand in front of the light here. The kids are watching Cruella and that's a heck of a soundtrack. If you haven't heard it, it's really good. But uh, anyways, I today really wanted to show you some ways how I save in the kitchen. And my top three are utilizing an ingredient or a purchase to its fullest potential. So I wanted to keep it simple today and show you what we do with chicken. So we use the whole chicken and we use as much of it as we can. Um, and then I add things to make that chicken stretch throughout the week or months. So as you can see, we got some portions in the freezer, but we also use those bones for a broth. And then number two is gonna be making things from scratch. I am not good. I don't have the best dough recipes. I, you know, don't have the best homemade pasta, but making things from scratch can save you a ton of money, especially when you're buying your flours, salts, sugars, things like that in bulk. And those are things that we always have on hand because we buy them in bulk. I find that Azure Standard has the best prices when it comes to the quality of flowers that I want. And I will say I've been studying up for about a month now. I very much am still interested in food shortages uh, because it's going to affect everyone. I was getting my info from, you know, online sources, but I decided because it will be, you know, affecting my myself and my area, not the most, but I mean, that's that's what's going to directly affect us. I started asking local farms that we go to all the time. I went up to our grain mill to see what was affecting them. I went to our bison farm. I went to our veggie farm. And I really just started asking them, you know, what is going up in price? What is going up in price that you may not be able to keep purchasing. And I think that is like my logic when it comes to food shortage now, just asking the source essentially. And you know, I've been compiling a list. So I suggest getting those grains and, you know, flours, uh, salt, sugar, spices, all those things in bulk so you have them and then worry about the other things later, your meats, your eggs, canned items. We we have a pretty good uh, stocked pantry when it comes to canning our vegetables, I'm trying not to get off topic. And then number three was setting aside a day or just even a couple hours or maybe even if you can't, a half hour a day. This is what I did when I was teaching full time. Uh, just to meal prep a few items. That way things don't go to waste and find creative ways to use those ingredients. So that's what I was trying to show you today that we utilize our leftovers in many different ways. It may not always taste um, like five-star dining, but it's food and it's satiating and it's, you know, it's still good. So I think that's the best way to start saving in the kitchen. Those are like my tips, my top three tips, tricks, and hacks. And I really just wanted to take you along today to show you what we do because I've gotten a lot of questions lately and I just wanted to share with you how we stay on this budget, especially with one more on the way. I I was nervous, I'll, I'll tell you, when I first found out I was pregnant, like how are we going to afford this? I really think that we practice a lot of uh, money saving hacks and ways to utilize uh, the resources around us to uh, be able to welcome this little sweet angel into the world. So I did want to jump on here and say that now we are gonna make the strombolis and calzones. So what I like to do is lay out all of my ingredients. I think my belly might be in some of these shots. Uh, and I like to keep it to the side here. So these have pretty much risen to their full potential. I was talking to my mom and kind of rolling these. So some of them are looking nicer than others. But what I like to do is just roll these babies out. Okay, put a little bit more flour down here. And uh, you can just roll these completely out or you can just start moving your hands like this. Uh, it really is up to you, but they will rise. So they're little mini cow, or well, mini calzone slash stromboli. And then what you do is just coat the outside of it with some olive oil and that's how they get crispy, but we are not there yet. I just use a fork to press them too. This is how I make my empanadas as well. I just don't use the Italian seasoning. Um, but yeah, you could use an egg wash if you wanted. 
You could also move these so you can actually maneuver this, but this is the biggest cutting board I have, so. And I'm gonna do a few of mine first, because I feel like I always do the meat, because I know a lot of you are meat eaters, but thinking about myself right now. All right, so I'm gonna use some pesto. And really, you can fill this with anything. It does not have to be pizza-esque toppings, but I love stromboli. They really do it right on the East Coast when it comes to you know, those kinds of restaurants, but I just have not found a place out here in Colorado that can figure out how to do authentic Italian food. Maybe I'm just not looking in the right spot, but I have some provolone in there. This is pretty strong provolone, so I'm actually going to put some mozzarella. Still frozen a bit, but it will be just fine. And then, yeah, all I do is just fold over here and fold this part over and then just fork it essentially <laughs> to seal. So like my favorite kinds of foods, these just like handheld yummy dough and filling recipes. So it should be fine like that. I just like to seal it because again, I am not a like good I guess baker I don't I just don't have attention to detail when it comes to doughs and cakes and things like that so yeah and then I just do a few here just to let some air in and then you're good to go you can put this on a baking sheet and then I'll put some more flour down and I'll just do one for my husband just so you could see the filling that I'm using I don't know. Some days he likes pesto and some days he doesn't. Again, he's meat and potatoes through and through. You throw some cheese in there, of course he's going to like it. But yeah, that's pretty much how we're doing it. And then I'm just going to do pesto. I don't really even think he would know that it's in here. He would just think it's basil. So <laughs> put that in there. And we'll do the ham sausage mixture. Of course, if you had salami or pepperoni or something, that would be a good one to put in here. Then some of the provolone. So these are all done here. And what I do is just drizzle some olive oil on top. And then I just take a brush just so it gets crispy on the top. Like I said, you could use an egg wash, but as you can see, I had to rush through this. So they don't look the prettiest, but you know, if you've been here a while, it's just about tasting good in my opinion. So yeah, I'm just gonna do this. You can sprinkle extra garlic powder on top of these if you want, but that pesto has a ton of flavor. So I'm just gonna leave it. I have my oven at 425. We'll see, maybe 10, 10 to 15. I don't know, I really don't. So I'll, I'll let you know. And of course, everything will be listed in the description box. Here's how everything turned out. Like I said, they're not gonna look amazingly perfect, but they taste really good, which is what's important. So we have some over here, and then these were on the bottom rack, so of course they got a little crispier, but uh, the kids are enjoying them with some sauce. I will show you their plates over here and some pineapple. If it were up to me, we'd put pineapple in there, but I didn't wanna shock everyone. I love uh, pineapple and pizza and things like that. I so. taste you. Oh, thank you. This and is what the pesto looks like, and then this is the cheese, and then I'm gonna go fix me a plate. Hello, my friends. It's the next day. It is New Year's Day, so Happy oh. New Year, and I have my pork going. I just shredded it, so it's mm. in there. It's been in there alone slow for like eight hours with some fresh uh, black pepper. Typically you would put sauerkraut right into this, but my husband doesn't like it. So that's okay. Um, we'll serve that on the side. I'm just doing some carrots, but you could do whatever vegetable you want to do. We just have these and we need to use them up. And then over here, I'm making some mashed potatoes. I don't have a lot of white potatoes left, so I have some sweet in there as well. And we don't really do a gravy with this. You can just do some of the pork juice if you wanted to or some sour cream but it's pretty simple and that is it i just wanted to show you our final plates here and include it in our food cook with me content for the week
Here is the final setup. This is one of the kids' plates. We just did salad, pork, sauerkraut, sweet potato, and carrot. I didn't mean for most of the things to be orange, but here we are. Um, I just did butter, some dill and garlic seasoning, and some cheese. And then here is the sauerkraut. We made that together in the summer. Black pepper, um, just some salt and garlic. And then here is the pork. It fell right apart, so I was pretty happy with how tender it is because pork can get pretty dry. And then I just did the salad kit from the haul the other day. And then over here, we just have some roasted carrots and we are gonna dig in. Happy New Year to everyone. I hope this year brings you some awesome memories.